My name is Talia Goldstein, and I'm an assistant professor of psychology at Pace University in New York City. And my research is all about what acting and theater and role play and pretend play can do for children. And I'm specifically interested in how engaging in imaginary worlds and role play can help children's social skills specifically. So there are a lot of theories and a lot of ideas about what acting and theater and imagination and role play may do for children, and a lot of claims too on how it helps their empathy their morality, their language, their memory, their what we call theory of mind, which is the ability to think about other people's mental states and emotional states, social interaction, um, and sort of the list goes on and on. But up until a few years ago, there hadn't been much systematic scientific research on what theater actually does for kids. Most of the research uh, up until about 10 years ago had really focused on two things that seem very obvious when you watch somebody act or pretend, which are their language skills, how they are able to verbally express themselves, and then also their memory, right? Because we're all very interested in how actors are able to memorize huge amounts of text and huge numbers of lines whenever they're in a play or in a movie. And previous research has found that being involved in theater can help your memory, and it can also help your literacy skills, reading, and vocabulary for the very young children. However, no work had really looked at which aspects of social knowledge and social communication could be positively affected by theater. So the work that I've done over the last 10 years has taken a variety of forms. In some cases, we've just looked at kids who were already interested in theater and already engaged in acting classes, and then looked at whether they had higher levels of theory of mind, which is this ability to understand other people's mental and emotional states, and empathy, which is the feeling of somebody else's emotion, sort of sharing emotions with another person. And we have found that adolescents and adults who are involved in theater classes have higher levels of these social skills. But that work can't determine whether those social skills are caused to be higher by acting classes or if people with higher levels of social skills are just naturally attracted to acting as a way to practice those social skills. So what my lab group and I have done more recently is look at whether if we work with four-year-olds and enroll them in theater classes and have them engage in drama games, do they increase their social and emotional skills over other groups of four-year-olds who are doing different kinds of play, say block play or reading books with a teacher? And we found that in this age group, in four-year-olds specifically, drama games and theater games seem to be uniquely improving emotional control. So the kids who are involved in theater and in drama games seem to be getting better at understanding and recognizing their own emotional states and then better able to control them over time. And we're currently expanding this work too to look at individuals with autism spectrum disorder. So there have been several programs of research, notably by Matthew Lerner at Stony Brook University and Blythe Corbett at Vanderbilt University, looking at how programs that use role play and theatrical techniques and games can help kids with autism to improve their social connectedness and social understanding. And with my collaborators and I, we're currently looking at these questions as well, and looking at whether a musical theater program that works with kids in middle schools throughout New York City can increase their imitation behaviors, their social behaviors, and their emotion recognition.